your favourite chicken thighs. First of all, we'll turn on the grill. The reason why we're using the thighs, i.e. the brown meat, is so it doesn't go dry. Season them nice. Salt, pepper, olive oil. Then turn them over, please. Go on, get your hands in there. Good. Don't worry about your nail varnish. <laughs> So there's no bones in there, so the chicken will cook really quickly. Why do you do it skin side down? Skin side down first. That will stop the chicken from going dry, and it will get it really nice and crispy. Turn it over. Good. See the way it's marked the skin now? Yeah. Got all that really nice flavour in there as well. And we'll turn them every two or three minutes. How much do you love chicken? Lots. Lots. We're going to serve that with some really nice chickpeas. First of all, we're going to make a little dressing, OK? One nice teaspoon of mustard in, please. A little bit of olive oil. A touch of salt and pepper. Give that a really good mix. And then just squeeze lots of lemon juice in there. A little taste. That's nice. Mmm, that is delicious. Now look at that chicken now. <laughs> Color there. Beautiful. Nice and crispy as well. Turn the gas down now and leave that chicken to griddle. Right, let's get the chickpeas done, shall we? Yep. So we've got peculiar peppers. So these are roasted, smoked Spanish peppers. Have a little taste. Mm. Mm. I would like you to chop up the kebab berries. You take off the, the top and then slice them in half like that. Wash your fingers. I will. OK. So these are small peculiar peppers. Yeah, it's a bit sweeter. There you go. Watch your fingers, please. Watch your fingers, please. Tuck them in. Three finger rule. Come on, Holly. <laughs> you know the three finger rule. I've been telling you that since six months old. Good girl. You're fast, aren't you? Yeah. In fact, you're faster than Jack. Don't tell him. <laughs> It'll get him upset. Shall I put the peppers in? Yes, please. Thank you. Good. And then give it a little mix with your fingers, please. Lovely. Rump holes. <laughs> Out. Come on. Out, out, out. Okay. Get out. Every time there's food, he's always there. He smells it from a mile away. So chicken's grilling, skin side down. Why is it on skin side down? Because it keeps it in moist. Keeps it really nice and moist, that's right. Now, we'll start the watermelon salad. Watermelon, feta, cucumber, pan nice and hot. Get the pecans, OK, and just sort of break them up. I'm going to start slicing the watermelon. Do you keep the seeds in? Yeah, seeds are fine. So you just make these little boats and go around like that. Now, with the toasted pecans, give them a little seasoning, would you please? With pepper too? Um, no, just touch your salt, thank you. Roll them around and just start to see them smoking, see? And now turn the gas off, please. We're just going to take half the cucumber and give that a little peel for me, please. That's a nicely dry roasted. Take them off. So from there, I want you then to slice around the seeds. And that's the watery part. OK, we'll keep that out. Wash your fingers, please. Nice. Am I still faster than Jack? You are still very fast. A lot faster than Jack. Now, cucumber on top of the melon. We'll mix it up in a minute. We want to give that a nice little light seasoning. A touch of salt and a little touch of pepper, please. Crush those little bits. Pecans in there for me. Nice. Next, Greek feta cheese. This is kind of easy. Isn't it? Jack, that fat lump snoring, you've got to get him out of it. <laughs> Hurry up, mate, take him out. Fat, lazy lump snoring his head off. Come on, out. So we've got that nice juicy melon, the cucumber, and now the cheese. We need something to bring it to life. Have a taste. That's mm. sumac, OK? That is very citrusy. And we're just going to season that lightly. Now, what I want you to do is sprinkle the pecans in there. Mmm. What's that? Basil. Mint. Mint. Sorry. Minty. <laughs> Sorry. You get confused with Basil, your boyfriend. No, Daddy. OK, good. Keep it that way for another 10 years. Fresh mint over. And then a little drizzle of olive oil. OK, don't mix it yet. I know you're dying to get in there, aren't you? Mm hmm And just some fresh lemon juice. Why do you roll it? It starts to release all the juice. So now feel it. So it's less firm, a little bit more squodgy. No, it's all that lemon juice coming out. Now, what we need to do is just have a little taste. Mmm. Mmm. 
What do you taste? Everything yummy. It's fresh, isn't it? Mm. So, that's the salad done. Next, a refreshingly light dessert of lemon and basil granita. Start by putting the juice of seven lemons and the zest of one into a small pan with a sprinkling of caster sugar. Stir over medium heat until the sugar dissolves. Dilute your granita mix with a little water. Pour into a freezer-proof container, stir in a good handful of chopped fresh basil and place covered in the freezer for three hours. When the granita is frozen around the edges, lightly break up the mixture with a fork. Return to the freezer and repeat twice until the granita is frozen with a granular texture. Spoon into chilled serving glasses. Garnish each with a sprig of basil. Amazingly light and refreshing lemon and basil granita. With our granita and feta salad done and the griddled chicken beautifully charred, we can put the final touches to our main course. I'll take the chicken. Look how juicy that is. See? What we need to do now with the basil yep. is to get the leaves. I just want to tear them in there. There you go. Eh? We'll start lifting the chicken up, please, and putting it in the chickpeas. Oh, that juicy, amazing chicken. Remember this little baby here? Yeah. A vinaigrette? The heat of the chicken will infuse the basil because the chicken's nice and warm. Melt the basil and turn this salad into something really delicious. That smells so nice. Doesn't it? See how we've glazed the chicken? Slide that onto our plate. How gorgeous is that? Very. <laughs> Got that roasted pepper flavour, fresh basil, and those wonderful chickpeas with the caper berries. Gorgeous. I think Jack will like this one. You think Jack will like this one? Yeah. Yeah? And Megan? And Tilly this one. And Tilly... Really? Interesting. Let's go. Well done. This is my ultimate light dinner. Griddled chicken thighs with chickpeas and a lemony dressing. Feta and watermelon salad. And for a refreshingly zingy end to the meal, lemon and basil granita. First things first, I'd like you to season the stew and steak. A nice spoon of flour. Mix? Mixed, yeah. Good girl. What's the flour going to do, Dad? The flour helps to brown the beef. Our seasoned flour will also help to add flavour and thicken the stew. I feel a bit like marshmallows. You do feel a little bit marshmallow, don't you? Look at the size of the chunks of the beef. Yeah. I'm going to cut my carrots, literally. So it be similar. Similar size, that's right. Does that mean they'll cook equally? That's right. Now, these are little pearl onions. I'm going to put them in whole as well. Everything has to stay the same, otherwise it could burn. Oh, we've seen burn garlic before. <laughs> oh, Matilda. She promised you weren't going to mention that. What is that? Thyme. Thyme. And what are they? Bay leaves. Bay leaves, good girl. Tablespoon of oil in. The beef goes in first, OK? In. Now... It's a really nice colour. It's got a beautiful colour. In with the carrots. Thyme in. Good girl. Garlic. Pearl onions in. Ooh. Good. Give that a really good mix up. Mmm. Are stews easy to make, Daddy? Stews are very easy to make, providing at the beginning you give it a little bit of love. Now that's all beautifully browned. Mmm. That beer? That is beer. Mm. And that's going to deglaze the pan. Adding beer or stout helps to tenderise the beef and give it a hearty, delicious flavour. And that's the only way I want you to taste beer. In a stew. Yeah? Mm. I want you to add in a couple of teaspoons of tomato puree, please. In fact, three, please. Because it's so nice. And there's one final thing in there. Cover the stew and steak with the beef stock. Give that a little mix with Danny, please. That's really nice. It's not even cooked yet. Do you keep all these vegetables in when you um, serve it to people? Oh, yes. 
Is the garlic going to be burnt? No. Excuse me. Right. And we always put the lid with a little bit. Just a little bit so it can breathe. That's right. And not make the stew all watery. Into the oven at 150, please, Tills, for about two and a half hours. And now, you can focus on your homework. Time to knock up two delicious hearty potato classics in one. Twice baked bubble and squeak jacket potatoes. Start by baking large potatoes in a preheated oven at 180 degrees. Shred one third of your Savoy cabbage and saute in butter and add a dash of water until tender. After about half an hour, your potatoes should be crisp on the outside and cooked through in the middle. Slice them in half and scoop out the soft potato centre. Then mash with a couple of knobs of butter, mix in the cabbage and season to taste. Spoon this mixture back into your potato shells and into the oven for a further 10 minutes or until the tops are nice and crispy and golden. Two delicious hearty potato classics in one. Twice baked bubbling squeak jacket potatoes. Right, homework done. Yeah. Beef stew is stewing. Stewing. Let's get on with our delicious, hearty pear tart. I've been looking forward to this. You and I, chef, are going to prep the pears. So if you peel, I'll top and tail into quarters. Pears go soft in the oven very, very quickly. So if we're going to put them on a tart, we'll need to leave them whole, half or in quarter. What's that in there? Ginger. Mm, that's right. That's stem ginger. So we're going to use stem ginger and fresh ginger. Next, add your stem ginger a little of the stem ginger syrup Good girl. and some brown sugar to your quartered pears. And then just grate some fresh ginger. Off you go. So it's a bit of a um, different one to grate this because it doesn't really come through like the cheese. No. We'll make that a little bit zesty. And now we've got some lemon zest. Some lemon zest in there. Right, what I want you to do now is give that a nice little mix. Now, this is a sweet pastry. You can buy this stuff. We can make it. It's so easy to do. So give me your finger. That's my centre point. I want you to get the pears going round like that in a really nice circle. It's difficult, isn't it? Because the pears keep on sliding all over the place. Yeah. We've got egg wash on the outside, and I'm going to show you a little trick. So you lift that up. So is the egg wash acting like a bit of a glue? That's right. Crimple this with our finger. And the pastry forms this nice little shelf, like a little money bag. Are you going to do anything with the spare pears? Oh, yeah. You start building that up, then, you see? We've got the fresh ginger, and those nice little bits of stem ginger. Let me go round my egg. With you your know, glue. With my glue, just on top. Tilly's last job is to give our tart a good dusting of icing sugar. So that caramelises it and colours the pears beautifully. It's a bit oh. like snow. Isn't it? Now, that glazes the pastry, so the pastry has this really nice shine on there as well. Finally, the lemon on top. And then put that there. 180, and in she goes. Can you smell the beef? It smells delicious. Wow, it's even gone down a bit more, hasn't it? Look at that. I want you to just... I was hoping you'd ask. Just have a little taste. How's that taste now? Mm. <laughs> We're not allowed anymore. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right, dumpling time. Flour in, please. I'm using self-raising flour for a fluffy result, but if you like your dumplings hard, use plain flour. Next, the dumpling essential, suet. Ooh. That makes the dumplings nice and moist. Thank you. Followed by a generous dollop of grain mustard. Two yeah, fingers. Start rolling the fingers round, and I've got a touch of warm water here. Your fingers are now a nice little whisk. My fingers are getting tired. Right, now put your hand in there. Now you should bring mm -hmm. all that dough together. I'll show you the best way to get that nice and clean. Sprinkle some flour on your hands, rub them together. All that will come off. Nice. That's a good way. Isn't it? Now, we've got this wonderful dumpling mixture. How squidgy is that? Ooh. A little flour on your hands. OK. Roll these lengthways. And then I want you to roll them like that in your hand. Off you go. Smell that mustard in there? Huh? Smell? Oh. OK. 
Come on. I never trust you with something like that, should I? <laughs> Do you want I'm to smell it? Yes, please. <laughs> Tilly. Gently. Let's go in at 12 o'clock. 1 o'clock. 12 in the centre. I'm going to put that back into the oven for 20 minutes to cook the dumplings. Now, if you open the door for Daddy, I'm going to take out that tart. Ooh, it smells so nice. Doesn't it? Our pear tart has had 35 minutes in the oven. Look at that, baby. That looks good. Mmm. Mm. Would you like me to start dusting? Yes, please. Nice and gently all the way around. Good girl. Little taps. The others are going to love this. It looks a bit like a snowy cake. Doesn't it? Good job. Now, very carefully carry that to the table. How nice does that look? Delish. OK, I'll check on the dumplings. Now, Ooh, look. Excited. They've sort of doubled in size. Whoa, mm. definitely. A final sprinkle of chopped parsley and our stew is ready for the table. I might have to have a quick taste before we go. Tilly. Just to check. I mean, we do have to be sure. We have to be very sure. Mmm. Mmm. That is an amazing, hearty beef stew with dumplings, right? the twice-baked loaded potatoes, and we are ready. This is my ultimate hearty dinner. A comforting rich beef stew with mustard dumplings and twice-baked bubble and squeak jacket potatoes. And to make sure your sweet tooth is completely satisfied, a rich and zingy pear and ginger galette.